fire extinguisher. A fire extinguisher, or extinguisher, is an active fire protection device used to extinguish or control small fires, often in emergency situations. It is not intended for use on an out-of-control fire, such as one which has reached a ceiling, endangers the user, or otherwise requires the expertise of a fire department. Typically, a fire extinguisher consists of a handheld cylindrical pressure vessel containing an agent which can be discharged to extinguish a fire. In the United States, fire extinguishers in all buildings other than houses are generally required to be serviced and inspected by a fire protection service company at least annually. Some jurisdictions require more frequent service for fire extinguishers. The servicer places a tag on the extinguisher to indicate the type of service performed, annual inspection, recharge, new fire extinguisher. There are two main types of fire extinguishers, stored pressure and cartridge operated. In stored pressure units, the expellent is stored in the same chamber as the firefighting agent itself. Depending on the agent used, different propellants are used. With dry chemical extinguishers, Nitrogen is typically used. Water and foam extinguishers typically use air. Stored pressure fire extinguishers are the most common type. Cartridge operated extinguishers contain the expellent gas in a separate cartridge that is punctured prior to discharge, exposing the propellant to the extinguishing agent. This type is not as common, used primarily in areas such as industrial facilities, where they receive higher than average use. They have the advantage of simple and prompt recharge, allowing an operator to discharge the extinguisher, recharge it, and return to the fire in a reasonable amount of time. Unlike stored pressure types, these extinguishers use compressed carbon dioxide instead of nitrogen, although nitrogen cartridges are used on low temperature, minus 60 rated, models. Cartridge operated extinguishers are available in dry chemical and dry powder types in the US and in water wetting agent, foam, dry chemical, classes A, B, C and B, C, and dry powder, class D, types in the rest of the world. Fire extinguishers are further divided into handheld and cart-mounted, also called wheeled extinguishers. Handheld extinguishers weigh from 0.5 to 14 kilograms, 1.1 to 30.9 pounds, and are hence, easily portable by hand. Cart-mounted units typically weigh more than 23 kilograms, 51 pounds. These wheeled models are most commonly found at construction sites, airport runways, heliports, as well as docks and marinas. History The first fire extinguisher of which there is any record was patented in England in 1723 by Ambrose Godfrey, a celebrated chemist at that time. It consisted of a cask of fire extinguishing liquid containing a pewter chamber of gunpowder. This was connected with a system of fuses which were ignited, exploding the gunpowder and scattering the solution. This device was probably used to a limited extent, as Bradley's weekly messenger for November 7, 1729, refers to its efficiency in stopping a fire in London. The modern fire extinguisher was invented by British Captain George William Manby in 1818. It consisted of a copper vessel of 3 gallons, 13.6 litres, of pearl ash, potassium carbonate, solution contained within compressed air. The soda acid extinguisher was first patented in 1866 by Francois Carlier of France, which mixed a solution of water and sodium bicarbonate with tartaric acid producing the propellant CO2 gas. A soda acid extinguisher was patented in the U.S. in 1881 by Armin M. Granger. His extinguisher used the reaction between sodium bicarbonate solution and sulfuric acid to expel pressurized water onto a fire. A vial of concentrated sulfuric acid was suspended in the cylinder. Depending on the type of extinguisher, the vial of acid could be broken in one of two ways. One used a plunger to break the acid vial, while the second released a lead stopple that held the vial closed. Once the acid was mixed with the bicarbonate solution, carbon dioxide gas was expelled and thereby pressurized the water. The pressurized water was forced from the canister through a nozzle or short length of hose. The cartridge-operated extinguisher was invented by Reed and Campbell of England in 1881. 
which used water or water-based solutions. They later invented a carbon tetrachloride model called the Petrolex, which was marketed toward automotive use. The chemical foam extinguisher was invented in 1904 by Alexander Loren in Russia, based on his previous invention of firefighting foam. Loren first used it to extinguish a pan of burning naphtha. It worked and looked similar to the soda acid type, but the inner parts were slightly different. The main tank contained a solution of sodium bicarbonate in water, whilst the inner container, somewhat larger than the equivalent in a soda acid unit, contained a solution of aluminium sulfate. When the solutions were mixed, usually by inverting the unit, the two liquids reacted to create a frothy foam and carbon dioxide gas. The gas expelled the foam in the form of a jet. Although licorice root extracts and similar compounds were used as additives, stabilizing the foam by reinforcing the bubble walls, there was no foam compound in these units. The foam was a combination of the products of the chemical reactions, sodium and aluminium salt gels inflated by the carbon dioxide. Because of this, the foam was discharged directly from the unit, with no need for an aspirating brank pipe, as in newer foam compound types. In 1910, the Pyrene Manufacturing Company of Delaware filed a patent for using carbon tetrachloride, CTC, to extinguish fires. The liquid vaporized and extinguished the flames by inhibiting the chemical chain reaction of the combustion process. It was an early 20th century presupposition that the fire suppression ability of carbon tetrachloride relied on oxygen removal. In 1911, they patented a small, portable extinguisher that used the chemical. This consisted of a brass or chrome container with an integrated hand pump, which was used to expel a jet of liquid towards the fire. It was usually of 1 imperial quart, 1.1 L, or 1 imperial pint, 0.57 L, capacity but was also available in up to 2 imperial gallons, 9.1 L, size. As the container was unpressurized, it could be refilled after use through a filling plug with a fresh supply of CTC. Another type of carbon tetrachloride extinguisher was the fire grenade. This consisted of a glass sphere filled with CTC, that was intended to be held at the base of a fire, early ones used salt water, but CTC was more effective. Carbon tetrachloride was suitable for liquid and electrical fires and the extinguishers were fitted to motor vehicles. Carbon tetrachloride extinguishers were withdrawn in the 1950s because of the chemical's toxicity, exposure to high concentrations damages the nervous system and internal organs. Additionally, when used on a fire, the heat can convert CTC to phosgene gas, formerly used as a chemical weapon. In the 1940s, Germany invented the liquid chlorobromomethane CBM, for use in aircraft. It was more effective and slightly less toxic than carbon tetrachloride and was used until 1969. Methyl bromide was discovered as an extinguishing agent in the 1920s and was used extensively in Europe. It is a low-pressure gas that works by inhibiting the chain reaction of the fire and is the most toxic of the vaporizing liquids, used until the 1960s. The vapor and combustion byproducts of all vaporizing liquids were highly toxic, and could cause death in confined spaces. The carbon dioxide CO2, extinguisher was invented, at least in the U.S., by the Walter Kidd Company in 1924 in response to Bell Telephone's request for an electrically non-conductive chemical for extinguishing the previously difficult to extinguish fires in telephone switchboards. It consisted of a tall metal cylinder containing 7.5 pounds kilograms, of CO2 with a wheel valve and a woven brass, cotton-covered hose, with a composite funnel-like horn as a nozzle. CO2 is still popular today as it is an ozone-friendly clean agent and is used heavily in film and television production to extinguish burning stuntmen. Carbon dioxide extinguishes fire mainly by displacing oxygen. It was once thought that it worked by cooling, although this effect on most fires is negligible. This characteristic is well known and has led to the widespread misuse of carbon dioxide extinguishers to rapidly cool beverages, especially beer. In 1928, Dugas, later bought by ANSUL, 
came out with a cartridge-operated dry chemical extinguisher, which used sodium bicarbonate specially treated with chemicals to render it free-flowing and moisture-resistant. It consisted of a copper cylinder with an internal CO2 cartridge. The operator turned a wheel valve on top to puncture the cartridge and squeezed a lever on the valve at the end of the hose to discharge the chemical. This was the first agent available for large-scale three-dimensional liquid and pressurized gas fires, and was but remained largely a speciality type until the 1950s, when small dry chemical units were marketed for home use. ABC dry chemical came over from Europe in the 1950s, with Super K being invented in the early 60s and Purple K being developed by the U.S. Navy in the late 1960s. In the 1970s, Holland 1211 came over to the United States from Europe, where it had been used since the late 40s or early 50s. Holland 1301 had been developed by DuPont and the U.S. Army in 1954. Both 1211 and 1301 work by inhibiting the chain reaction of the fire, and in the case of Holland 1211, cooling Class A fuels as well. Holland is still in use today, but is falling out of favor for many uses due to its environmental impact. Europe, and Australia have severely restricted its use, since the Montreal Protocol of 1987. Less severe restrictions have been implemented in the United States, the Middle East, and Asia. In 2013, Oval Fire Products Incorporated announced their intention to manufacture fire extinguishers with an oval-shaped cylinder, as opposed to the traditional round cylinder. Classification Internationally there are several accepted classification methods for handheld fire extinguisher. Each classification is useful in fighting fires with a particular group of fuel. Australia In Australia, yellow, pollen, fire extinguishers are illegal to own or use on a fire, unless an essential use exemption has been granted, this is due to the extreme dangers it can cause if activated in an enclosed area. United Kingdom According to the standard BSEN 3, fire extinguishers in the United Kingdom as all throughout Europe are red RAL 3000, and a band or circle of a second color covering between 5 to 10 percent of the surface area of the extinguisher indicates the contents. Before 1997, the entire body of the fire extinguisher was color coded according to the type of extinguishing agent. The UK recognizes six fire classes. Class A fires involve organic solids such as paper and wood. Class B fires involve flammable or combustible liquids, including petrol, grease, and oil. Class C fires involve flammable gases. Class D fires involve combustible metals. Class E fires involve electrical equipment appliances. Class F fires involve cooking fat and oil. Class E has been discontinued but covered fires involving electrical appliances. This is no longer used on the basis that, when the power supply is turned off, an electrical fire can fall into any of the remaining five categories. In the UK the use of Holland gas is now prohibited except under certain situations such as on aircraft and in the military and police. Fire extinguishing performance per fire class is displayed using numbers and letters such as 13A, 55B. EN3 does not recognize a separate electrical class, however there is an additional feature requiring special testing, 35 kV dielectric test per EN3-7-2004. A powder or CO2 extinguisher will bear an electrical pictogram as standard signifying that it can be used on live electrical fires, given the symbol E in the table. If a water-based extinguisher has passed the 35 kV test it will also bear the same electrical pictogram, however, any water-based extinguisher is only recommended for inadvertent use on electrical fires. United States There is no official standard in the United States for the color of fire extinguishers, though they are typically red, except for Class D extinguishers which are usually yellow water and Class K wet chemical extinguishers which are usually silver, and water mist extinguishers which are usually white. Extinguishers are marked with pictograms depicting the types of fires that the extinguisher is approved to fight. In the past, extinguishers were marked with colored geometric symbols, 
and some extinguishers still use both symbols. The types of fires and additional standards are described in NFPA 10, Standard for Portable Fire Extinguishers, 2010 edition. Fire extinguishing capacity is rated in accordance with ANSIUL 711, Rating and Fire Testing of Fire Extinguishers. The ratings are described using numbers preceding the class letter, such as 1A, 10B, C. The number preceding the A multiplied by 1.25 gives the equivalent extinguishing capability in gallons of water. The number preceding the B indicates the size of fire in square feet that an ordinary user should be able to extinguish. There is no additional rating for class E, as it only indicates that the extinguishing agent will not conduct electricity, and an extinguisher will never have a rating of just C. For additional USUL rating information see Fast Flow Extinguishers. Installation Fire extinguishers are typically fitted in buildings at an easily accessible location, such as against a wall in a high traffic area. They are also often fitted to motor vehicles, watercraft, and aircraft. This is required by law in many jurisdictions for identified classes of vehicles. Under NFPA 10, all commercial vehicles must carry at least one fire extinguisher, with size UL rating depending on type of vehicle and cargo. That is, fuel tankers typically must have a 9.1 kg, 20 pounds, while most others can carry a 2.3 kg, 5 pounds. The revised NFPA 10 created criteria on the placement of fast flow extinguishers in locations such as those storing and transporting pressurized flammable liquids and pressurized flammable gas or areas with possibility of three dimensional Class B hazards are required to have fast flow extinguishers as required by NFPA 5.5.1.1. Varying classes of competition vehicles require fire extinguishing systems, the simplest requirements being a 1A. 10BC handheld portable extinguisher mounted to the interior of the vehicle. The height limit for installation, as determined by the National Fire Protection Association (NFPA), is 60 inches for fire extinguishers weighing less than 40 pounds. However, compliance with the Americans with Disabilities Act (ADA) also needs to be followed within the United States. The ADA height limit of the fire extinguisher as measured at the handle, is 48 inches. Fire extinguisher installations are also limited to protruding no more than 4 inches into the adjacent path of travel. The ADA rule states that any object adjacent to a path of travel cannot project more than 4 inches if the object's bottom leading edge is higher than 27 inches. The 4-inch protrusion rule was designed to protect people with low vision and those who are blind. The height limit rule of 48 inches is primarily related to access by people with wheelchairs, but it is also related to other disabilities as well. Prior to 2012, the height limit was 54 inches for side reach by wheelchair accessible installations. Installations made prior to 2012 at the 54 inch height are not required to be changed. Types of extinguishing agents Dry chemical this is a powder-based agent that extinguishes by separating the four parts of the fire tetrahedron. It prevents the chemical reactions involving heat, fuel, and oxygen and halts the production of fire-sustaining free radicals, thus extinguishing the fire. Monomonium phosphate, also known as tri-class, multipurpose, or ABC dry chemical, used on class A, B, and C fires. It receives its Class A rating from the agent's ability to melt and flow at 177 DEGC, 350 DEGF, to smother the fire. More corrosive than other dry chemical agents. Pale yellow in color, sodium bicarbonate, regular, or ordinary used on Class B and C fires, was the first of the dry chemical agents developed. In the heat of a fire, it releases a cloud of carbon dioxide that smothers the fire. That is, the gas drives oxygen away from the fire, thus stopping the chemical reaction. This agent is not generally effective on Class A fires because the agent is expended and the cloud of gas dissipates quickly, and if the fuel is still sufficiently hot, the fire starts up again. While liquid and gas fires do not usually store much heat in their fuel source, solid fires do. 
sodium bicarbonate was very common in commercial kitchens before the advent of wet chemical agents, but now is falling out of favor, as it is much less effective than wet chemical agents for Class K fires, less effective than Purple K for Class B fires, and is ineffective on Class A fires. White or blue in color, potassium bicarbonate, also known as Purple K, used on Class B and C fires. About two times as effective on Class B fires as sodium bicarbonate, it is the preferred dry chemical agent of the oil and gas industry. The only dry chemical agent certified for use in ARFF by the NFPA. Colored violet to distinguish it, potassium bicarbonate and urea complex, also known as Monex Power-X, used on Class B and C fires. More effective than all other powders due to its ability to decrepitate where the powder breaks up into smaller particles, in the flame zone creating a larger surface area for free radical inhibition. Gray in color, potassium chloride, or Super K, dry chemical was developed in an effort to create a high-efficiency, protein foam-compatible dry chemical. Developed in the 60s, prior to Purple K, it was never as popular as other agents since, being a salt, it was quite corrosive. For B and C fires, White in color, foam compatible, which is a sodium bicarbonate, BC, based dry chemical, was developed for use with protein foams for fighting Class B fires. Most dry chemicals contain metal stearates to waterproof them, but these will tend to destroy the foam blanket created by protein, animal, based foams. Foam compatible type uses silicone as a waterproofing agent, which does not harm foam. Effectiveness is identical to regular dry chemical, and it is light green in color, some ANSUL brand formulations are blue. This agent is generally no longer used since most modern dry chemicals are considered compatible with synthetic foams such as AFFF, Met LKYL slash Pyrochil is a speciality variation of sodium bicarbonate for fighting pyrophoric liquid fires, ignite on contact with air. In addition to sodium bicarbonate, it also contains silica gel particles. The sodium bicarbonate interrupts the chain reaction of the fuel and the silica soaks up any unburned fuel, preventing contact with air. It is effective on other Class B fuels as well. Blue red in color. Foams Applied to fuel fires as either an aspirated, mixed and expanded with air in a branch pipe, or non-aspirated form to form a frothy blanket or seal over the fuel, preventing oxygen reaching it. Unlike powder, foam can be used to progressively extinguish fires without flashback. AFFF, aqueous film forming foam, used on A and B fires and for vapor suppression. The most common type in portable foam extinguishers. It contains fluorotensides which can be accumulated in the human body. The long-term effects of this on the human body and environment are unclear at this time. ARAFFF, Alcohol-resistant aqueous film-forming foams, used on fuel fires containing alcohol, forms a membrane between the fuel and the foam preventing the alcohol from breaking down the foam blanket. FFFP, film-forming fluoroprotein, contains naturally occurring proteins from animal byproducts and synthetic film-forming agents to create a foam blanket that is more heat-resistant than the strictly synthetic AFFF foams. FFFP works well on alcohol-based liquids and is used widely in motorsports, CAFS, compressed air foam system, any APW-style extinguisher that is charged with a foam solution and pressurized with compressed air. Generally used to extend a water supply in wildland operations. Used on Class A fires and with very dry foam on Class B for vapor suppression. Arctic fire is a liquid fire extinguishing agent that emulsifies and cools heated materials more quickly than water or ordinary foam. It is used extensively in the steel industry. Effective on classes A, B, and D. Fire Aid, a foaming agent that emulsifies burning liquids and renders them non-flammable. It is able to cool heated material and surfaces similar to CAFS. Used on A and B said to be effective on some Class D hazards, although not recommended due to the fact that Firiard still contains amounts of water which will react with some metal fires. Water Cools burning material. APW, air pressurized water, 
cools burning material by absorbing heat from burning material. Effective on Class A fires, it has the advantage of being inexpensive, harmless, and relatively easy to clean up. In the United States, APW units contain 2.5 gallons, 9 liters, of water in a tall, stainless steel cylinder. In Europe, they are typically mild steel lined with polyethylene, painted red, containing 6 to 9 liters, 1.75 to 2.5 gallons, of water. Water mist uses a fine misting nozzle to break up a stream of deionized water to the point of not conducting electricity back to the operator. Class A and C rated. It is used widely in hospitals for the reason that, unlike other clean agent suppressants, it is harmless and non-contaminant. These extinguishers come in 1.75 and 2.5 gallon units, painted white in the United States and red in Europe. Wet chemical and water additives Wet chemical, potassium acetate, carbonate, or citrate, extinguishes the fire by forming a soapy foam blanket over the burning oil and by cooling the oil below its ignition temperature. Generally Class A and K, F in Europe, only, although newer models are outfitted with misting nozzles as those used on water mist units to give these extinguishers Class B and C firefighting capability. Wetting agents detergent-based additives used to break the surface tension of water and improve penetration of Class A fires, antifreeze chemicals added to water to lower its freezing point to about 40 DEGF. Has no appreciable effect on extinguishing performance. Clean agents and carbon dioxide Agent displaces oxygen, CO2 or inert gases, removes heat from the combustion zone, halotron, Fe36, or inhibits chemical chain reaction, pollens. They are labeled clean agents because they do not leave any residue after discharge which is ideal for sensitive electronics and documents. Pollen, including Holland 1211 and Holland 1301, a gaseous agent that inhibits the chemical reaction of the fire. Classes B, C for lower weight fire extinguishers, 2.3 kg, under 9 pounds, and A, BC for heavier weights, 4.1 to 7.7 kilograms, 9 to 17 pounds. Banned from new production, except for military use, as of January 1, 1994 as its properties contribute to ozone depletion and long atmospheric lifetime, usually 400 years. Pollen was completely banned in Europe resulting in stockpiles being sent to the United States for reuse. Although production has been banned, the reuse is still permitted. Pollen 1301 and 1211 are being replaced with new halocarbon agents which have no ozone depletion properties and low atmospheric lifetimes, but are less effective. Halocarbon replacements, HCFC Blend B, Haloton I, American Pacific Corporation, HFC 227A, FM 200, Great Lakes Chemicals Corporation, and HFC 236 FAR, FE 36, DuPont, have been approved by the FAA for use in aircraft cabins in 2010. Considerations for Holland replacement include human toxicity when used in confined spaces, ozone depleting potential, and greenhouse warming potential. The three recommended agents meet minimum performance standards, but uptake has been slow because of disadvantages. Specifically, they require two to three times the concentration to extinguish a fire compared with Holland 1211. They are heavier than Holland, require a larger bottle because they are less effective, and have greenhouse gas potential. Research continues to find better alternatives, CO2, a clean gaseous agent which displaces oxygen. Highest rating for 7.7 .7 kg, 20 pound, portable CO2 extinguishes as 10 B, C not intended for Class A fires, as the high-pressure cloud of gas can scatter burning materials. CO2 is not suitable for use on fires containing their own oxygen source, metals or cooking media. Although it can be rather successful on a person on fire, its use should be avoided where possible as it can cause frostbite and is dangerous to use as it may displace the oxygen needed for breathing, causing suffocation. Mixtures of inert gases, including inargin and argonite, 
Compressed CO2 sprinkler is another design used to fight the electric fires with cubic cylinder of 7 cubic meter starting from 1 meter above the sprinkler level. Novec 1230 fluid, also known as dry water, or sapphire fluid, a fluoronated ketone that works by removing massive amounts of heat. Available in fixed systems in the US and in portables in Australia. And like other clean agents, this one has the advantage of being a liquid at atmospheric pressure and can be discharged as a stream or a rapidly vaporizing mist, depending on application. Potassium aerosol particle generator, contains a form of solid potassium salts and other chemicals referred to as aerosol forming compounds, AFC. The AFC is activated by an electrical current or other thermodynamic exchange which causes the AFC to ignite. The majority of installed currently are fixed units due to the possibility of harm to the user from the heat generated by the AFC generator. Class D There are several Class D fire extinguisher agents available. Some will handle multiple types of metals, others will not. Sodium chloride, Super D, Metal X or Metal Fire X TNGSHR, contains sodium chloride salt which melts to form an oxygen excluding crust over the metal. Useful on most alkali metals including sodium and potassium, and other metals including magnesium, titanium, aluminum, and zirconium. Copper-based, copper powder Navy 125S, developed by the U.S. Navy in the 70s for hard-to-control lithium and lithium alloy fires. Powder smothers and acts as a heat sink to dissipate heat but also forms a copper lithium alloy on the surface which is non-combustible and cuts off the oxygen supply. Will cling to a vertical surface. Lithium only, graphite based, G+, G1, Lithex, Pyramet or Metal Fire X TNGSHR, contains dry graphite that smothers burning metals. First type developed, designed for magnesium, works on other metals as well. Unlike sodium chloride powder extinguishers, the graphite powder fire extinguishers can be used on very hot burning metal fires such as lithium, but unlike copper powder extinguishers will not stick to and extinguish flowing or vertical lithium fires. Like copper extinguishers, the graphite powder acts as a heat sink as well as smothering the metal fire. Sodium carbonate based, now X, used where stainless steel piping and equipment could be damaged by sodium chloride based agents to control sodium, potassium, and sodium potassium alloy fires. Limited use on other metals. Smothers and forms a crust, some water based suppressants may be used on certain class D fires, such as burning titanium and magnesium. Examples include the fire blockade and fire aid brands of suppressant. Some metals, such as elemental lithium, will react explosively with water, therefore water-based chemicals should never be used on such fires due to the possibility of a violent reaction. Most Class D extinguishers will have a special low-velocity nozzle or discharge wand to gently apply the agent in large volumes to avoid disrupting any finely divided burning materials. Agents are also available in bulk and can be applied with a scoop or shovel. Fire Extinguishing Ball Several modern ball or grenade style extinguishers are on the market. They are manually operated by rolling or throwing into a fire. The modern version of the ball will self destruct once in contact with flame, dispersing a cloud of ABC dry chemical powder over the fire which extinguishes the flame. The coverage area is about 5 square meters. One benefit of this type is that it may be used for passive suppression. The ball can be placed in a fire-prone area and will deploy automatically if a fire develops, being triggered by heat. Most modern extinguishers of this type are designed to make a loud noise upon deployment. This technology is not new, however. In the 1800s, glass fire grenades filled with suppressant liquids were popular. These glass fire grenade bottles are sought by collectors. Some later brands, such as Red Comet, were designed for passive operation, and included a special holder with a spring-loaded trigger that would break the glass ball when a fusible link melted. As was typical of this era, some glass extinguishers contained the toxic carbon tetrachloride. Condensed aerosol fire suppression 
Condensed aerosol fire suppression is a particle-based form of fire extinction similar to gaseous fire suppression or dry chemical fire extinction. As with gaseous fire suppressants, condensed aerosol suppressants use clean agents to suppress the fire. The agent can be delivered by means of mechanical operation, electric operation, or combined electromechanical operation. To the difference of gaseous suppressants, which emit only gas, and dry chemical extinguishers, which release powder-like particles of a large size, 25 to 150 um, condensed aerosols are defined by the National Fire Protection Association as releasing finely divided solid particles, generally less than 10 um, usually in addition to gas. Whereas dry chemical systems must be directly aimed at the flame, condensed aerosols are flooding agents and therefore effective regardless of the location and height of the fire. Wet chemical systems, such as the kind generally found in foam extinguishers, must, similarly to dry chemical systems, be sprayed directionally, onto the fire. Additionally, wet chemicals, such as potassium carbonate, are dissolved in water, whereas the agents used in condensed aerosols are microscopic solids. Maintenance most countries in the world require regular fire extinguisher maintenance by a competent person to operate safely and effectively, as part of fire safety legislation. Lack of maintenance can lead to an extinguisher not discharging when required, or rupturing when pressurized. Deaths have occurred, even in recent times, from corroded extinguishers exploding. There is no all-encompassing fire code in the United States. Generally. Most municipalities, by adoption of the International Fire Code, require inspections every 30 days to ensure the unit is pressurized and unobstructed, done by an employee of the facility, and an annual inspection by a qualified technician. Hydrostatic pressure testing for all types of extinguishers is also required, generally every 5 years for water and CO2 models up to every 12 years for dry chemical models. Recently the National Fire Protection Association and ICC voted to allow for the elimination of the 30-day inspection requirement so long as the fire extinguisher is monitored electronically. According to NFPA, the system must provide record-keeping in the form of an electronic event log at the control panel. The system must also constantly monitor an extinguisher's physical presence, internal pressure and whether an obstruction exists that could prevent ready access. In the event that any of the above conditions are found, the system must send an alert to officials so they can immediately rectify the situation. Electronic monitoring can be wired or wireless. In the UK, three types of maintenance are required. Basic service, all types of extinguisher require a basic inspection annually to check weight, correct pressure, using a special tool, not just looking at the gauge, and for signs of damage or corrosion. Cartridge extinguishers are opened up for internal inspection and check weighing of the cartridge, labels are checked for legibility, where possible dip tubes, hoses and mechanisms checked for clear free operation, extended service, water, wet chemical, foam and powder extinguishers require every five years a more detailed examination including a test discharge of the extinguisher and recharging. On stored pressure extinguishers this is the only opportunity to internally inspect for damage corrosion. By recharging fresh agent is used as they all have a shelf life, even water goes foul inside an extinguisher. Note, extinguishers should be percentage tested according to total number of units in any given area. Some extinguishers contain pressure in excess of 1.38 mpa, 200 psi, and this internal pressure over periods of time affects each brand and make differently depending on their placement and location, overhaul, CO2 extinguishers, due to their high operating pressure, are subject to pressure vessel safety legislation and must be hydraulic pressure tested, inspected internally and externally and date stamped every 10 years. As it cannot be pressure tested a new valve is also fitted. If replacing any part of the extinguisher, valve, horn, etc. with a part from another manufacturer then the extinguisher will lose its fire rating. This may invalidate insurance, as would incorrect or inadequate servicing if it were to be found. In the United States there are three types of service as well. Maintenance inspection, 
all types of extinguishers should be inspected at least once a year. The extinguisher is checked to make sure it has proper pressure, gauge in green or proper cartridge weight, has the correct volume of extinguishing agent, tech weighs it, is within the required hydro test and internal maintenance intervals, is in good condition and all external parts are serviceable. Often, dry chemical and dry powder types are hit on the bottom with a rubber mallet to make sure the powder is free-flowing, which is called fluffing the powder. The tech will then attach a new tamper seal around the pin and a yearly service tag, internal maintenance. Water, annually, some states, all five years, NFPA 10, 2010 edition, foam, every three years, wet chemical and CO2, every five years, dry chemical and dry powder every six years, pollen and clean agents, every six years. Cartridge operated dry chemical or dry powder, annually, stored pressure dry chemical mounted on vehicles, annually, water, annually, some states, all five years, NFPA 10, 2010 edition, foam, every three years, wet chemical and CO2, every five years, dry chemical and dry powder every six years, pollen and clean agents, every six years, cartridge operated dry chemical or dry powder, annually, stored pressure dry chemical mounted on vehicles, annually, hydrostatic testing, water, foam, wet chemical, and CO2, every five years, dry chemical, dry powder, pollen, and clean agents, every 12 years. Note. These are the required intervals for normal service conditions, if the extinguisher has been exposed to excessive heat, vibration, or mechanical damage it may need to be tested sooner. The agent is emptied and depressurized and the valve is removed. After a thorough internal and external visual inspection, the cylinder is filled with water, placed inside a safety cage, and pressurized to the specified test pressure, varies with the type, age and cylinder material, for the specified time period. If no failure, bulges, or leaks are detected, the cylinder passes. The cylinder is then emptied of water and thoroughly dried. CO2 types of the test date, company's ID, etc. are stamped on the cylinder, all other types get a sticker on the back of the cylinder. Once dry, the units are recharged. Unlike the UK, the U.S. does not rebuild extinguishes and replace valves at specific intervals unless parts are found to be defective, with the exception of Hollen. Hollen types are often given new O-rings and valve stems at every internal maintenance to minimize any leakage potential. OEM equipment must be used for replacement parts for the extinguisher to maintain its UL rating. If parts are unavailable, replacement is recommended. Keep in mind extinguishers have a projected service life of about 25 to 35 years, although many are of such quality that they can outlast this, but realize that science is ever-changing, and something that was the best available 30 years ago may not be acceptable for modern fire protection needs. Vandalism and extinguisher protection Fire extinguishers are sometimes a target of vandalism in schools and other open spaces. Extinguishers are occasionally, partially or fully discharged by a vandal, impairing the extinguisher's actual firefighting abilities. In open public spaces, extinguishers are ideally kept inside cabinets that have glass that must be broken to access the extinguisher, or which emit an alarm siren that cannot be shut off without a key, to alert people the extinguisher has been handled by an unauthorized person if a fire is not present. Fire Extinguisher Signs Fire Extinguisher Identification Signs are small signs designed to be mounted near a fire extinguisher, in order to draw attention to the extinguisher's location, for example if the extinguisher is on a large pole, the sign would generally be at the top of the pole so it can be seen from a distance. Such signs may be manufactured from a variety of materials, commonly self-adhesive vinyl, rigid PVC and aluminum. In addition to words and pictographs indicating the presence of a fire extinguisher, some modern extinguisher ID signs also describe the extinguishing agent in the unit, and summarize the types of fire on which it may safely be used. Some public and government buildings are often required, by local legal codes, to provide an ID sign for each extinguisher on the site. 
Similar signs are available for other fire equipment, including fire blankets and fire hose reels racks, and for other emergency equipment, such as first aid kits. Placement of fire extinguisher signs Most licensing authorities have regulations describing the standard appearance of these signs, for example text height, pictographs used and so on. Photoluminescent fire extinguisher location signs Photoluminescent fire extinguisher signs are made with non-toxic photoluminescent phosphor that absorbs ambient light and releases it slowly in dark conditions, the sign glows in the dark. Such signs are independent of an external power supply, and so offer a low-cost, reliable means of indicating the position of emergency equipment in dark or smoky conditions. The luminance performance for life safety appliance location signs should meet the requirements of international standard ISO 17398 so that the sign is not only excited at very low ambient light levels, 25 lux, but also has effective luminance intensity and longevity, making the life safety message conspicuous in the event of power failure, or if smoke obscures emergency ceiling lights. The Photoluminescent Safety Products Association PSPA, has guidance classifications for luminance performance to help users with applications under International Maritime Organization Emergency Equipment and Life-Saving Appliance Location Requirements, and Worldwide Industrial Fire Safety Management Requirements. Photoluminescent signs are sometimes wrongfully described as being reflective. A reflective material will only return ambient light for as long as the light source is supplied, rather than storing energy and releasing it over a period of time. But, many fire extinguishers and extinguisher mounting posts have strips of retroflective adhesive tape placed on them to facilitate their location in situations where only emergency lighting or flashlights are available.